students today we are going to discuss about the chapter statistics and probability and uh, this is a new chapter which we are going to study uh, here the name of the chapter is statistics and probability first of all let us discuss what is this statistics my dear students statistics is a branch of mathematics and this is basically a science which deals with collection organization presentation analysis and interpretation of numerical data so in your previous class i hope you remember you have studied about data data collection and organizing the data reading the information from the data and in grade 6 you have studied about pictographs how do you make pictographs and how do you infer information from the pictographs and then you have learned in grade 7 how to make the bar graph so which is one way of uh, graphical representation of the data also you have uh, studied about measures of central tendency that is mean median and mode so i hope you recall then uh, class teacher used to mark attendance in the register and somebody used to come to your class for collecting that attendance that how many total students are there how many are present and then this information was analyzed by school how many total students are present in grade 7 and then how many total students are present in grade 8 things like that or you need you can calculate the percentage of students who are present today percentage of students who are absent today so this is one way of uh, collecting the information now uh, we have been talking about the word data so what is basically this data so data is information which is in the form of numerical figures and my dear students every day we come across wide range of information in the form of uh, numerical figures i hope uh, you must have seen the newspaper and in the newspapers uh, you have seen the information given in the form of tables and you must have observed some graphs like you must be reading the minimum and ma maximum temperature of the day stock stock exchange rates things like that and uh, there are lots and lots of uh, references of uh, surveys conducted and the results uh, after the survey was conducted that too is given in the tabular form in the form of numerical figures let us observe this so this is one uh, picture which has been taken from a newspaper now you see how beautifully with the help of statistics the entire information has been uh, represented in uh, numerical figures you can closely see that uh, number of road accidents then number of persons injured in the road accidents then number of fatal accidents number of persons killed in road accidents so things like that uh, yearly a comparison has been done from 2014 to 2018 uh, in this particular uh, information which is given in the newspaper similarly if you see in uh, other areas where the information is represented in the form there you can infer a lot of useful information so what we are going to study in grade 8 so in grade 8 there are basic five things which we are going to do number 1 we will learn how to organize data in the tabular form using tally marks and then we will learn to arrange data in tabular form and make a histogram this is another way of representing the information graphically and then we will learn how to read information 
if a histogram is given to us. After that, we will learn another way of representing the information graphically, and that is called a pie chart. And after that, we will understand the concept of probability. As you know, that name of the chapter is statistics and probability. Now I am coming back to the first thing, raw data. So let us recall its definition. Raw data means information which is in the form of numerical figures. For example, if you see weights of uh, students in 8J in kilograms, if uh, there are 40 students in a class, we can write down the entire collection of weight of students and that information is in the numerical figures and that is termed as raw data. Similarly, marks obtained by students of 8F in unit test of mathematics out of 30. So this will be again an information which is in the form of numerical figures. So such information is called raw data. My dear students, here we would be using the term observation. So when we collect information in numerical figures, so we call it as raw data. So each entry is termed as an observation. And the collection of all such observations is called data or raw data. Now, there is another term which we are going to understand what do we mean by presentation of data now you can see on the screen uh, we have taken the ages of 10 people who are traveling in a bus and all these ages are given in the year 45 14 27 13 18 45 48 55 12 and 62 say for example from this we need to know what is the age of youngest member and what is the age of oldest member? And how many members have age less than 25 years? For getting the answers of such questions, we use a strategy. And that strategy is we either increase, uh, uh, we either organize the given data in ascending order or we write it in descending order. So when we arrange the data in ascending order or in the descending order, that is called presentation of data. I hope it is clear to all of you. So if we arrange the data in uh, ascending order here in this particular example, we see we get the observations as 12, 13, 14, 18, 27, 15, 15, 48, 55, 62. Is it right? If we arrange in ascending order, is it right? So you need to arrange in ascending order. So what do you get? You need to shift these two entries, 15 and 15, before 18. OK, so now we can see that all these entries are in the ascending order. So what, what is this? 12, 13, 14, 15, 15, then 18, 27, 48, 55, and 62. So here, now, if you need to find out the answers of the questions which have been asked, you can easily answer them. What were the questions? What is the age of the youngest member? Now, you can simply say 12 years. What is the age of the oldest member? You can simply say 62 years. Another question, how many members have aged less than 25 years? So you can simply count 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, six people are there who are less than the age of 25 years. So this is this process of uh, arranging the data in ascending or descending order is uh, called as uh, presentation of data. Now I'm uh, going to explain to you another interesting thing here. The term which is given is range. So what do we mean by range of the uh, this raw data. So range basically is the difference between the highest observation and the lowest observation. So whatever value is given to the highest observation uh, and lowest observation, you take those values and find the difference. So here in this question, if you see highest observation is 62 
and the lowest is 12. So 62 minus 12, we get 50. So 50 is the range of this raw data. Okay, let us move on to the next thing. And it says frequency distribution table. Now, what is frequency distribution table? And what are the different ways of making the frequency distribution table? So let us uh, think about it. Suppose uh, you are given marks of 20 students of the class 8 in mathematics. And this is out of 100. And uh, here you can see these uh, 20 marks are listed. So we can see that uh, in this data, some of the numbers are repeating. Okay, let, let us see about this number 69. So I can see 69 in the second row. In the third row, 69 is there. And in the fourth row, also 69 is there. So I can say that 69 is appearing three times. So what, what is the mathematical term associated to it? If I say 69 is appearing three times, so that means 69 has frequency of three. Right? Okay. Let, let me go back to the data. Now, can you see 27? So in the first row, we have 27. In the second row, again, we have 27. So frequency is two. Then in the third row, also, we see 27 two times. So overall, if we see 27 is appearing four times. So frequency of 27 is four. So this is how we use the term frequency. Now we have to make the frequency distribution table. For making the frequency distribution table, we use the telemarks concept. Uh, you know, you can count it here. 27 is appearing four times, 32 is appearing one time. Uh, when you write the data in the ascending order and you are counting it. But here in this case, there were only 20 terms. So you are able to do it easily. But now, if there are more number of terms, then how to do that? How to go about it? So in that situation, we use the concept of tally marks. So try to understand this. If the number of observations is very less, then it is convenient to count and find respective frequencies from the given data. But if the number of observations is more, then arranging the data in ascending or descending order is a cumbersome process. It's a tedious job. And it, it may not be convenient for us to find the frequencies by just counting. And in such cases, what we do, we use the concept of telemarks. So let us see what is this telemarks. So telemarks are marked in the bunches of five. And the fifth telemark is drawn diagonally across the first four. Now you closely observe the telemarks. So if the frequency is one, uh, we write this one. Frequency is two, so two bars are used. So frequency is three, three bars are used, four bars. And for fifth bar, what we do, we put a diagonal line and this is considered as five. So if you have to represent six, now you see how six is represented, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So this is how, you know, we use the concept of tally marks and it helps in uh, counting and writing the frequencies. So here, I'm going to discuss one example. It says the rainfall in millimeter in a city on 30 days of certain month was recorded as follows. And we are asked to prepare a frequency distribution table for the above data. Now you see what you have to do. You have to first see one. One is appearing two times. So basically, you know how we do? We start with the number 11. OK. And after 11, we put one bar. Then again, we see in the first row, 11 is there. So we put two bars. Then one. After one, we put one bar. After five, we put one bar. After eight, we put one bar. Then 10, we put one bar. Again, we see 11 is appearing third time. So we will put the third bar. 
9 is appearing for the first time, we put one bar. Similarly, 33 here in the first row, it is appearing for the first time, we put one bar. And we keep on doing the process and we see that we get the tally marks. And by the help of these tally marks, we write the frequencies. And this is how we try to write down the frequency distribution table using the tally marks. I hope this concept is clear to you. Now, in my next class, I would uh, be discussing the next topic of this particular chapter. Thank you so much. Until then, you know, you need to practice all the concepts which we have discussed and note down in your notebook also. Bye-bye. Take care.